Mostly we've dealt with double integrals in rectangular coordinates, but let's talk a little bit about moving them to different coordinate systems. So take a look over here. If I have the region that I'm integrating over, not necessarily the function I'm integrating, but just the region, and the this is what's called an annulus, goes here from some radius of 2 to some radius of 4, or, you know, oops, that should be... Two to four. So if I have if I have that region, it kind of makes sense to instead of trying to figure out the limits of integration, where I say, oh, well, the limit goes from you know uh, x goes from two to four, but it also goes from negative two to negative four, and y has this this function. So you probably have to slice it a couple of different ways, and you'd have to think about it. Um, Instead of doing that, you can define it directly in terms of polar coordinates, where r goes from 2 to 4, and theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. And this becomes ever more complicated if it turned out that your region of integration was something like this. Right now, it's easy to think about. It's the same thing in terms of r, but the theta goes from 0 to 3 pi over 2, so you have to be a lot more careful with how you set up your order of integration. But luckily, with uh, polar coordinate transformations, we can set this up that it, it operates natively in polar coordinates, and we can integrate that. So what we have is if I have some sort of function f, and you know it has the natural polar coordinate uh, types of definitions, right? R cosine theta, R sine theta. And then on, so, on that region, so think of like this region, I can write R as a function of theta, and I know that theta goes from zero, or sorry, goes from some starting point to some ending point. It's also important to note that in this case, R has to be positive. We can't have those negative R's like we deal with sometimes. You kind of can do that, but typically what you want to do is you'll take the positive case and then you'll subtract uh, the negative, like you'll do the negative case like it's positive and you'll subtract that. It's a lot easier. Then what we find is instead of dealing with a double integral here, we can transfer it to an iterated integral of f, we plug in, instead of plugging in x, we plug in r cosine theta. Instead of plugging in y, we plug in r sine theta. But we don't get just d, like you might think we get dr d theta, but we actually end up with this r dr d theta. And you might ask yourself, well, why is that? Well, and that, that it comes from the fact that when we were normally setting up the definition of a double integral, we had these differential areas. We gridded out the whole space and we have these differential area blocks. But the problem is when you, when you partition out in terms of this angle space, so if you take a look at this right here, I have some sort of point r theta, and then this point goes a little further in terms of r, so it goes delta r, and then this one goes a little bit up, so it goes delta theta, and then this one goes over delta r and delta theta. Well, there's a little bit of a trick here because the total the total length or the total area of this piece, even with the same increase in R, that that piece is going to be differently sized than if, for instance, I had started so the same the same distance or the same piece over in R, you won't be able to come up as much in or I'm sorry the same amount in theta. If you were to take the area of this slice and take the area of that slice, they're actually not the same area, even though they're the same distance in delta r and the same delta theta in angle difference. So there's, there's a little bit of nuance there. And as we go further and study this more deeply, we'll learn about some, some more clever ways to do coordinate transformations that that kick this out sort of natively, but intuition-wise, this is the idea. You can't grid it the same because they don't operate in the same way.